Hello, we are here with composer Jonathan Bingen, the composer of the work Untitled, and uh, a piece that we are including in uh, today's performance. Uh, welcome, Jonathan. Welcome to Oberlin. No, Beautifully. Thank you for having me. So um, we have been working on your on your piece. Uh, very energetic, beautiful, with some contrasting, beautiful sections. Um, for a while, the the ensemble is is enjoying immensely, and um, I would like you to to introduce your piece to our audience. A piece that that remains untitled, and of course that has been uh, a, a long a, a controversy in certain ways by creators. The the effect and uh, that that the title has on a piece, the influence that a title. Uh, the power that the title has um, on the perception of the audience. So you decided to keep your piece untitled. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, I remember when I wrote my my first piece, it was a string quartet during my undergrad. Uh, it was a piece called Diamond. And I felt that what I was trying to convey was a, a certain sound, but I noticed that when people had heard it, they gave me their own response. They, they felt like they were either flying through the clouds or, or sailing on the water, which to me was, you know, I, I thought to myself, who am I to say what your experience should be? When I had moved to New York, I, I began a fascination with uh, painting and, and art. I would go down to different museums and galleries, and I noticed that a lot of the paintings, especially those coming out of the 20th century, the you know the time period that influences my music the most, uh, they went untitled, and I felt that that was just a brilliant way for a listener or a viewer to to have their own experience, to make up their own experience, and have that that uh, experience of looking at this art just be a bit more personal. So when it came to this piece, it, it was the same way. And I, I felt that there would be uh, fewer restrictions that I had put on myself. Uh, there would be fewer restrictions for the audience in their experience. So uh, by, the, by the time the piece had been finished, the last note was on the page, I, I put, on, put up Untitled and um, I, I said very little in the program note at the premiere because I just wanted people to just experience it. And do you think you lost something? You lost an opportunity, or at least you you are still uh, happy with the decision? You, you know what? I, I am happy with the, the decision, but I will admit that when we talk about a, a, a larger audience, they seem to welcome the fact that you know that there's already a narrative being told uh, uh, before they view the piece. I mean, think of it as like going to the movies. You want to go to the movie when you've already, you've already known a little bit about it. You know the title, perhaps you've watched the trailer a few times. You already know the characters. You may already know the story, but you still would pay money for that movie versus the movie you have no idea about. You know, uh, so if, if we're talking for the mass audience, you know, uh, I probably would label it uh, something. At the time, I was naming all of my works based on the uh, the ensemble that that would be performing the work, such as string quartet or or violin concerto, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I found that in this day and age, people are actually looking for an extra non musical influence. They seem to be drawn to the the music that's based off of a poem or the music that's based off of a, a painting or, or an essay that the composer read. And they enjoy the process of connecting the two. So, um, you know, upon learning that, I have not named a piece untitled afterwards, but it's not to say that I, I won't in the future, but I, I've just noticed that they, the audience seems to be a little bit more involved with the whole experience if there's a title there. And, and, and you know, the, the history of music is full of uh, anecdotes of composers writing some sort of program note, then completely, you know, taking that off the score. Uh, uh, even, you know, even Mahler did that. Um, so he wanted the audience to completely focus on the music because, you know, the, the program note was limiting. So it's, it's, a, it's a long debate 
between giving the audience something to focus on and then limiting the audience experience by giving the audience uh, something to uh, to listen to so it's, it's, it has been a, a long debate and it's fascinating that that composers nowadays in the 21st century young composers like you still struggle with the dilemma of of doing it so um still i will love to uh, uh for you to give us a little bit of an idea what is that we should be prepared to listen to oh okay that's fair uh, when it comes down to this, uh, I also began a fascination with, with form and structure. Before, when I started writing music, there was always uh, just one idea that uh, my teacher would have me work with, and we would expand that idea to last 10 minutes of the piece. If I left that particular idea, then I would have to return to it in order to establish some bit of structure. With Untitled, this was the first piece of music where I forewent that strategy. For the majority of the piece, I want to say it's the first five minutes or so, we're listening to the same material over and over. And we get to a point where the piece sounds conclusive. And uh, you know, there's a loud bang, and it, it feels like it's the time to applaud. Um, and then the piece comes back with a softer section, a bit more uh, expressive, a bit, a bit more tonal. And the reason why I found that to be important is because when you look at tonal music, I, you know, I don't want to discourage others from writing tonal music, but by default, um, it, it may come off as lacking interest. And the reason why is because we're standing on so, so much history of tonal music. Now, the thing is, I still like to write tonal music, but I also understand that it's not going to be as appreciated unless we hear something a bit obscured uh, beforehand. So when it comes to this piece, I spend about five minutes with, um, with more uh, just obscuring the tonality as we'll hear. And then we get into this more soft section, tertian structure chords, and the piece ends like that. You know, my attempt was to have the audience wanting more uh, once the piece ends. And uh, that was one of the, the strategies that was taught to me is have the audience wanting more and you don't give it to them, you know, and hopefully they'll hit replay and then they'll just listen to the piece again. So I'm hoping to establish that with this piece, that type of structure I'm still working with today. And it's something that I, I really enjoy just uh, giving a little bit more activity in the music firsthand, uh, more experimentation, and then ending the piece in a, a softer, more melancholic strategy and, and, and uh, having the, the audience respond to that. Well, it's a, it's a truly enjoyable experience to, to play and, and to listen to your, to your piece. And I'm, I'm sure our, our audience will, will love it as well. Jonathan, thank, thank you very much for, for your music. Thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to play it. And I hope many more wonderful uh, pieces will come out of your pen or your computer <laughs> uh, keyboard. Uh, thank you very much. My pleasure.
Thank you.